Welcome to One on One with Mitch LaFawn. Joining me on this episode, it is singer Phil Anselmo from the band Superjoint. We talk about their new album, Caught Up in the Gears of Application. We look back at Phil's career, talk sobriety, Black Sabbath, and a lot more. Before checking out Phil, please check me out on Twitter at Mitch LaFawn, M-I-T-C-H-L-A-F-O-N, Instagram at Mitch underscore LaFawn, one-on-one Mitch LaFawn on Facebook. And let's finish this off with paypal.me forward slash Mitch LaFawn. That is a whole lot of Mitch LaFawn. So <laughs> let's move along. Let's listen to Phil. This is the full unedited interview. Uh, enjoy. Here is the one, the only, Phil Anselmo. We are speaking with uh, Phil Anselmo. The new album is caught up in the gears of application. Um, Phil, first of all, always a pleasure to to speak with you. It's It's been a while. Um, God, it's been at least three or four years since the last one. Um, how have you been? I've actually been great. Very, very uh, <clears throat> productive, honestly. I've done. I'm sitting on tons of music and... Uh, just giving this body a rest and uh, whatnot for the grind and then getting ready to go out next year and support this new Super Joint record. Yeah, and, and we should talk about, about the health also. You've had some issue with the knees, I believe. Um, is that all settled now? I mean, are, are, are you good to go, or is, or is that still a concern? Uh, it's always a concern, good days, bad days. But, man, you know, it's like... What am I gonna do about it? You know, I I'm not. I'm just gonna get up, do my job, uh, no matter what it is. If I, if it's a day off, then I'm gonna do what I do on a day off. Make music. Uh, yeah. uh, if it's a gig day, I'm gonna do gigs. <laughs> you know. So, but yeah, man. Uh, pain, physical pain, just happens to be in the script for me so i just you know you gotta once again build that mental callus and just tough it out yeah yeah as i like to tell my kids suck it up buttercup we got some we got stuff to do right um thank you right right um caught up in the gears of application is the new album first one in 13 years last one a lethal dose of american hatred um talk to me about taking a break between the last two albums why 13 years and you've obviously been active you've done all kinds of other projects uh why 13 years between super joint projects because i never thought it would happen again true truthfully i thought super joint was done and really uh, i'll rush through this uh how it came to be again was uh, I was we were in the midst of uh, discussing the second Housecore Horror and Film Festival and talking about what band I should play in and all this. And uh, Kate Richardson suggested Super Joint. I'm like, no way. And then the co-founder of the event, Corey Mitchell, rest in peace. Uh, he really pushed forward. He's like, come on, man, super joint, super joint, super joint. So finally I said, man, let me ask Jimmy. Let's see where everybody's had that. Let's, let's look into this. Well, Jimmy was up for it. Um, Kevin Bond was up for it. And that right there, that's the, that, that, as far as the writing and playing and all of that, really, that, that that's the the founders of Superjoint right there, you know, aside from our ex-drummer. And uh, I guess the, with the addition of Blue on drums from War Beast and the Illegals and many other bands, uh... And uh, my main man, Steven Taylor, on the bass, he's, man, he plays guitar on the Illegals. He's become one of my right-hand men as far as bouncing riffs off of and, and whatnot. Uh, he, he's awesome to work with and an awesome dude. Um, once we got into the practice room, we realized that it was fun you know it was fun the group of guys around us were positive 
and dare I say sober, uh, you know, it's like, wow, this, this whole trickle down effect. It's like, wow. I, at this point, you know, I haven't had a drink since February of this, yeah, this year. And, you know, it's, I, I'm not missing that much. So it's like, uh, you know, either way, it was fun. It was fun uh, to play the show at the Horror Fest. And, you know, I guess that led to, hey, man, you know, do you want to write some new songs? And then, of course, that led to new songs. And and here we are talking about it. So it, it basically, you know, it was something I never wanted or never thought would re- reemerge, resurface, but it did, and you know that's why you never say never, and uh, you know it's like yeah, it's fun, man. It's it, it, it's fun all the way around, uh, as far as band members, as far as shows go, as far as songs go. It's fun. It's fun. Uh, let me man, let, let's talk quickly about the sobriety. You said you haven't had a drink since since February. H- has that sort of refocused your life? Has that led to a to a big change? I, I mean, how is that going for you? Pretty easy, man. Okay. Uh, you know, I I think the first week, first two weeks, are kind of rough as far as mood and all this, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But then, you know, you lose the taste for it. And obviously, it did nothing to hurt my creativity figure, and I'm working still, like right this second, working on three different records. You know, so, uh, God, man, I'm... Uh, it's great. It's great, honestly. No more hangovers. Look, that that's 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 two thumbs up. Yeah, that's a, that's a great thumbs up. Now, you mentioned that you're working on three other albums, and so that's what I want to ask you. It could be four, five, man. I've got so <laughs> much stuff. Man. It could be eighty-seven, but you've got eighty-seven. <laughs> there you go. That's a good number. That's a good number. You've got a couple of the guys from the Illegals playing with you in Superjoint and 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 stuff. What makes this a super joint album compared to an illegals album? Why not just become sort of the solo artist and it's it's the Phil Anselmo band and y- you know you cuz you've done Down and Pantera and boy you know you look at the discography uh, Arson Anthem, Christ Inversion, etc cetera, etc cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh why not sort of bring everything under just this is Phil Anselmo, these are my solo records and here we are. Huh. Well, honestly, because I've always viewed each band as its own thing, and um, you know, yeah, there's there's been like like on the first Illegals tour, we did uh, some Super Joint songs, we did Pantera stuff, and hell, we even did a Christ Inversion song one night. Just to, we, we, it was always off the cuff. and uh, minus the Pantera stuff because we knew we were gonna just mess with people really you know just give them give them give them a little panther for god's sake so you know uh, it's what they've been craving for a while so we you know we did we gave them some panther but still uh you know i think i'm i'm, I'm understanding where you're coming from it's it's like you know gosh you know to 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 single out everything to make everything its own thing kind of crowds out other bands. But the thing is, Superjoint sounds like Superjoint. It really does. It sounds like Superjoint. And the Illegals are quite... A, it's a far cry from Superjoint. It, it's a very far cry. It, musically, it's a lot more extreme. It's a, it's more uh, complex. It's more technical. And, uh, and, 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 and when I say when I say this, I'm also talking about the new Illegals record that nobody's heard yet. You know, it's like, man, you know, it's that thing is pretty much finished, 
minus uh, the mixing part of it, which, you know, it's a slow process because of being in so many different bands and this and that. Plus, I have a great engineer who's learning new things every single day. And, and you know, he, he does a whole lot of uh, uh, clean-up work without me, but, you know, when I'm out doing gigs and stuff like that. So uh, big thumbs up to Stephen, the big fella, Barrigan right there. But, uh, you know, uh, I think there's a big difference between a lot of the bands, you know. Uh, however, going back to our previous question, when I said never say never, you know, there may come a time where... We could get up there, a group of us. Uh, man, we would probably have to have two drummers, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, a lot of different moving parts, honestly, to 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 make to really just put it under Philip Anselmo. Oh, and here's the whole discography. You know, it's like wow, that that would be. Uh, pretty challenging, really, and, and 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 another another reason why I say this is because of these two records I'm working on right now, and I say two records because it's like 23 songs or so of uh, a band that I've been doing since really by myself. It started in about 1988 when I got my first four track and wrote this these series of songs, and then it got uh, rebooted, I guess, in um, the 90s, middle 90s, uh, when I moved back to New Orleans, and it's really uh, very mellow, very, very uh, atmospheric, very uh, different uh, from a whole lot of stuff that I've done in the past. And we use uh, a vast array of, of, of different instruments as far as, you know, heavy metal, uh, guitar, bass, drum, based uh, type bands would use, I guess. You know, it's, it's, it's like uh, way different. So uh, I would... Oh, man, honestly, I, I can't wait to drop this, and, and, and uh, meaning I can't wait for people to hear this record and hear these records that I'm talking about, uh, because it's going to, I don't know, shake things up. It's going to trip people out. It's going to cause... Uh, many of a discussion here, there, the other, you know, love it, hate it, be indifferent to it. It's going to cause discussion. And then when you talk about taking all of these bands and bring it on, bringing it, I guess, all into one package, it, it would take a lot of planning. It would, it would take a whole lot of planning and it would take a whole lot of free time from a lot of musicians that I work with that are in a whole lot of different other bands that demand that time. So, uh, you know, it's something that I guess it's possible. Once again, never say never. Uh, and also just, you know, public demand. You know, it's like, do, do people even want to hear this stuff live? Do, are people even going to like it? this stuff? You know, it's like, you know, all this stuff comes into account, this stuff. It really I wonder does. how many times I can say this stuff in one second. <laughs> we'll start counting. Um, I do want to ask you a, a, a sort of out of left field random question. Uh, Black, Go ahead. Good. Uh, Black Sabbath has uh, left the states. They're they're retired from here. They did the end tour. You were on the IOMI record years ago, singing on a song called "Time Is Mine." Um, so, a couple of questions. Uh, first of all, what was it like? working with Tony Iommi, because he is the Riff Master. And uh, what does Black Sabbath, the band, mean to you? Do you have five hours on your hand? <laughs> That's a, I've got about 15 I mean, minutes. i got Miles on. Goodwin calling up from April Wine. So. Jesus H. Christ <laughs> off the two-by-fours. Listen, 
first and foremost, Tony Iommi is one of the most genuinely awesome sweethearts in this music business. Uh, true to the bone, just so nice, so easy to work with a constant smile on his face and uh god damn i crack him up and uh, and cracking him up is is uh it's funny and he cracks me up too because he's out of his mind and and and, and i do mean in a good way and case in point would be uh when i was working with him this guy Bob Marlette was uh, the engineer, the producer guy in the in the room. Also, a great guy, but he'd always wear these uh, jogging pants, and then oh, this poor bastard in his tiny, tiny uh, uh, manhood, I should say. And, and the reason why I know this is because any time this poor fellow would stand up. Tony would depant him in front of everyone, and see, they, they, uh, that's where our sense of humors were very much in line, and it was funny, and yes, it was hilarious, and even Bob thought it was funny. So, uh, gosh. So anyway, working with Iommi, and it, it was amazing, and really, we we had three days together, and we cranked out three songs. And it was his pick of of the three songs which to use on his record. But really, the other two songs, uh, one came out of left field where he was just messing around. I said, whoa, 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 whoa. I said, Tony, play that again. And he goes, oh, what do you mean, this? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I said, dude, if you if you just played that a couple times in a row, man, we got ourselves a riff, you know. That's a main, that's a riff, buddy. And he's like, oh, I didn't even think of it like that way, you know. So, you know, uh, we created that right there. I got to play bass. Wow. You know, that was cool. And, um, you know, uh, I wish people, I, I, I know that on YouTube that uh, some people have posted some of these songs uh, with wrong song titles and song names and whatnot and God uh, definitely uh, knows that uh, the product, it's not even produced. It, it's uh, rough sounding and all that and whatnot. But really, we got a lot of work done, and working with Iomi is amazing. And Black Sabbath, put it this way if it weren't for Black Sabbath, we would not be on the phone together right now. Oh, absolutely. I just picked up the uh, Paranoid Deluxe Edition box set yesterday. What a masterpiece. I mean, it's got these two live shows yep. from 1970. It's it is just phenomenal and it, it's it's you know, it's 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 sad. We're we're, we're going to miss that band. Uh, hopefully they'll do a retirement sucks tour like Ozzy and come back, but what are you going to do? <laughs> right? Well, man, hey, <sighs> look. Let's just be let's just be grateful for the time, the songs, the albums. My God, Paranoid and Sabotage are my all-time all favorite Black Sabbath records, and that's that's yeah, that's see, that's even hard to say, you know, because of how great all the other ones I can sit here and name off that everybody knows, but still, you know, everybody has their favorites. Those two are mine. Paranoid Deluxe, I love it. Yeah, yeah, it's it's four CDs. If you haven't picked it up, I recommend it. It came out this week or last Friday. It's it's just brilliant, and uh, you know, Heaven and Hell and and uh, uh, Mob Rules, of course, with Dio is is brilliant too. Um, man, and that's another great. Yeah. That was another cool, cool, loving, awesome, fantastic person, Ronnie James Dio. From the day I met him till. Uh, Late in his life, when I could tell he was, uh, I was not feeling as as great as he used to, uh, you know, and that comes with age. So, you know, I didn't at the time I didn't recognize the the the, the direness of it all, but but still, you know, his his sweetness and and his, his spirit, just down to earthness, 
and and just ability to make time for those that that that, that were fans of his uh, is really unparalleled. So I just had to. I, Definitely had to give a little Dio shout out. Uh, yeah, you, you always have man. to. Um, am I allowed to ask you a question about Vinnie Paul, or would you rather skip that? I just don't. I, I don't know what uh, you can. Yeah, sure. All right. Uh, you know, he he has said recently that you have done a lot to uh, tarnish the Pantera uh, image. And do you agree with that assessment? Do you think you've done things that has tarnished the, the image? And he also has mentioned that he hasn't spoken to you in about 15 years. Is that something that you regret? Would you like to just get on the phone with him and sort of say, listen, forget Pantera reunions, forget all, but we were brothers for so many years. Let's just, you know, leave this world in peace, right? That'd be nice. But uh, honestly, dude, I don't. Uh, it, it's like, mm, uh, it's a tough comparison. It is to anything really. But but I, I I'm trying to make an analogy here. But I might just skip the analogy and just say that uh, I've pretty much given up on. Uh, I, talking to the guy or whatever, you know, we don't have anything much in common except that we played in the same band together that was a completely different band before I joined that band, and, um, yeah, so... So we can by, leave it at that, if, if you want. Yeah, yeah, we could, uh, yeah, yeah well, we probably should. Well, we'll leave it at that. Phil, I could go on for another half hour, but I do have Miles Goodwin. You got April April Wine, Wine, baby. Yeah, they're calling up in, in five minutes, so I got I to gotta move along. But once again, thank you for your time. This, I believe, is our fourth interview together. Uh, you've always been very uh, kind and uh, courteous, so uh, thank you for that. And hopefully we'll see you at Heavy Montreal, if not in 217, hopefully 218, but certainly uh, sooner rather than later. Man, right back at you, and uh, I appreciate you big time, buddy. I'll let you run. Get ready for that April 1. That's right. I like to rock, man. Him. I'm a high roller. Hey, <laughs> hey man, look, I, I love old rock and roll myself because I'm an old rocker. You're a Killer so Dwarves anyway, fan. Man. I remember that. Say again? You're a Killer Dwarves fan. You 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 told me a, a long story about how you bought the first Killer Dwarves album and you loved it to death. So you're a, you're and a don't forget, don't forget right. the lead singer. His birthday is the same day as mine, and that's the same day as Mike Tyson. So go. I'll leave you with that. I love you, buddy, and uh, you you know how to get in touch with me. Anything you ever need, absolutely. Just, and Hook as, me uh, up, man. As, uh, as uh, April Wine once said, rock and roll is a vicious game, and uh, there you go. Thank you, sir. That's very true. It hey, is. brother, have a, have a great interview, and thank you for this. Thank you. Absolutely. Bye for All now. Right, buddy. Bye. Bye-bye. And there you have it, folks, my interview with Phil Anselmo from the band Superjoint. New album is caught up in the gears of application. Do check that out, please. While you're checking stuff out, head over to Instagram at Mitch underscore LaFon, Twitter at Mitch LaFon. One on one, Mitch LaFon on Facebook and PayPal adopt me forward slash. You guessed it, Mitch LaFon, should you care to support the podcast? And with that, I bid you a fond farewell. Bye for now. Oh my. <laughs>